Tax Objective 9 Problems Problem 1. Mallory is running a relay at a track meet. She needs a pair of colored markers to place on two different locations on the track for the handoff she will be receiving. The markers are in a bag that contain four red, three yellow, and five orange markers. If she randomly picks two markers, one at a time, without replacement, what is the probability that she picks two orange markers? The first thing we need to know or remember is that when combining probabilities of separate or independent events, the probabilities must be multiplied. Let's look at the first event or first pick. What is the probability of picking an orange marker on the first try? It's 5 in the numerator on top since there are 5 orange markers and we have 12 in the denominator for the total number of markers. And we place 5 divided by 12 wrapped by parentheses in the calculator. If we just stopped here we might be tempted to choose answer C since it's 5 over 12. Now for the next part, without replacement Mallory has taken one of the orange markers out of the bag. So this is what is left, four orange markers which will go in the numerator and that will be out of 11 since there are 11 left. And we multiply 5 twelfths by 4 elevenths, press enter to multiply. We get this repeating decimal, 0.1515 etc. Usually a repeating decimal means that it's a fraction in decimal form. To find the fractional equivalent, press the math key on the upper left of the keypad, press enter, press enter again we get 5 over 33 and that's answer B. So we circle our correct answer B. One thing to look for in these types of problems is that the correct answer has always been one of the two smallest numbers because multiplying events always reduces probabilities more than the average person thinks they should. Problem 2. Victoria is taking a history test that has 30 true-false questions and 15 multiple choice questions with four answer choices for each question. If she guesses on four true-false questions and also guesses on three multiple-choice questions, what is the probability that she will get every question that she guessed on correctly? This is a problem similar to problem one where there are multiple independent events. Specifically, there are four true-false questions that are guessed at for a total of four independent events. And secondly, we have three other independent events guessing on three different multiple-choice problems we can multiply all these probabilities together and find our answer. The first situation reminds me uh, of predictions that I made in my own life. To correctly predict that my first child, Melissa, would be a daughter, that was a 1 out of 2 or a 50% probability. And then to correctly predict that my second child, Celeste, would be a daughter, that was also a 1 out of 2 or a 50% probability. And finally, to correctly predict that my third and I think final child, Joseph, would be a boy, that was also a 1 out of 2 or a 50% probability. But wait, there's more. I also correctly predicted that my friend and colleague, Mr. Sebastian, would have a girl before she was born last year, even before there was a sonogram. And that probability was 1 over 2 or 50% as well. Now, to combine all these probabilities, what do we need to do? We need to multiply all these independent probabilities together. So we have 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. And multiply together, there is a 1 in 16 chance that this could happen. And I bring out this personal story of my predictions because it happens to exactly match the probability of getting four true-false questions correct by guessing, and that is 1 16th. And now for the multiple choice questions, we have three of them, the probability of answering the first one correctly is 1 out of 4 or 25 percent and the probability of answering the second multiple choice question correctly is also 1 out of 4 or 25 percent and the probability of answering the third multiple choice question correctly is 1 out of 4 or 25 percent. To find the probability of guessing all three problems correctly is 1 fourth times 1 fourth times 1 fourth. So after multiplying the probability of guessing all three correctly is 1 out of 64. Now to combine the probabilities of getting all the true-false questions and all the multiple choice questions can be found by multiplying both of these numbers together, 1 16th times 1 64th. To multiply the numerators together, that's easy, 1 times 1 is 1, but for the denominator of the fraction, 16 times 64, we put them in our calculator and we press enter, we get 1024, we find 1 over 1024 here, and we circle our correct answer, B. 
Another way we could have done this one is to enter all the independent probabilities at the same time. Press enter. We get 9.7656 etc. to the power of 10 to the negative fourth. To convert this to a fraction we press the math key on the left side of the keypad. We press enter to convert to a fraction and press enter again. It doesn't give us a fraction, it's because the decimal approximation wasn't close enough to a fraction for the calculator to recognize. However, we can try each one of the answers and see which one also gives us 9.7656 etc. times 10 to the negative fourth power. So here's 1 over 1024 entered. Press enter. We see that we get 9.7656 etc times 10 to the negative 4, showing again that B is our correct answer. Problem 3. At a public high school, 40% of the students in the 10th grade are taking a music class this semester. How many of the 75 10th graders at the school are taking a music class? This problem is almost embarrassingly easy. However, it's especially important to get these easy ones correct because missing any one of them is the type of thing that makes students fail to pass the test. To get this one, we need to know a couple things. First, that 40% can and needs to be converted to a decimal equivalent. We can get a decimal equivalent by dividing the percentage by 100. So that would be 40 divided by 100 equals 0.4. And to help remember how to do it, you can just move the decimal point two places to the left, shown here in blue. And we also need to remember that this word of means multiply. So going to our calculator, we multiply this number, 0.4, by this number, 75, press enter, we get 30 students. And we see that answer here, so we circle our correct answer B. Sometimes I'm asked where the percentage key is on the calculator. I tell them that it's just dividing the number by 100. Also, some students want to try some crazy thing like dividing instead of multiplying. Pay attention and get it right. Problem 4. The Venn diagram below indicates the enrollment patterns of students who are taking music, algebra, and or biology at a small high school. How many students are taking all three classes? In this problem we have ellipses that represent enrollment in music, algebra, and biology classes. To find where the students are who are taking all three classes, we look for where the ellipses overlap, the areas that all three ellipses have in common. It's this area in the middle of the diagram that is within all three ellipses. And that number of students is here, three. And this is where we find three amongst the answer choices, so we circle our correct answer, D. Problem five, 180 cell phone users were surveyed to determine their cell phone company of choice. According to the pie chart, how many of those users are AT&T customers? This problem is very similar to problem 3. AT&T serves 30% of the users surveyed. And converting that 30% to a decimal is done by taking 30 divided by 100, and that equals 0.3. We next multiply this number by 180. Press enter. We get 54 users. This is where we find 54 users. So we circle our correct answer, D. Problem 6. Mark tosses a coin and then rolls a number cube with numbers 1 to 6. What is the probability that he tosses tails and then rolls a number greater than 4? This is another combined probability problem. First, what is the probability of tossing a tails? It's 1 out of 2 or 1 half. And then what is the probability of rolling a number greater than 4? Those numbers are 5 and 6, which are greater than 4 which would make a 2 out of 6, or one-third probability. And what are these two probabilities combined? One-half times one-third equals one-sixth. And this is where we find one-sixth. So we circle our correct answer, B. Problem 7. A farmer uses 6.5% of his land for pasture, 5 eighths for crops, and the rest is fallow. What percent of his land is fallow? Here we're being asked a percentage problem, as in understanding that percentages of some whole amount add to 100%, and also uh, being able to convert fractions into percentages. Here are the numbers we have to work with. We have 6.5% committed to pasturage, 
and we have five-eighths of the land being used for crops. And the remaining land is fallow, meaning that it is not in use, but is being rested for later use. And these amounts, the pasture land plus the crop land plus the fallow land, add to 100%. So we can set up an equation, 6.5% plus 5 eighths plus F equals 100% F standing for fallow. To be able to do the problem, this number 5 eighths needs to be converted to a percentage. With my experience in math, I've already done this in my head, but what we have to do is find the percentage. And to find it first, we divide 5 by 8, and that equals 0.625. And then to convert it to a percentage, we multiply by 100 for 62.5%. We can find the fallow land by taking 100% minus 6.5% minus 62.5%, and that equals 31% that is fallow or not in use. And this is where we find 31%, so we circle our correct answer, C. Problem 8. A company that produces bicycle tires found defects in 8 out of a random sample of 125 tires. If the company shipped 5,000 bicycle tires, how many can be expected to have defects? This problem is a proportion all the way. We first have the sample of 8 over 125, and we set it equal to our unknown amount of defects over 5,000. To solve for D now, we cross multiply the 5,000 from the lower right side, so that becomes 8 times 5,000 divided by 125. We press enter. Our answer is 320 defects. And here's where we find the number 320. So we circle our correct answer, D. Problem 9. On a trip to Bryce Canyon, the Campbell family drove 189 miles in 4.5 hours. If they continue driving at the same rate, how many miles will they travel in 8 hours? This is another proportion problem, this time using distance and hours, but the same principle applies. One thing we can do is take a look at all the answers. Are there any that we can eliminate? Yes, because if they went 189 miles in 4.5 hours, surely they went over 189 miles in over 4.5 hours. So that eliminates answer A, so we cross it off. This may not seem like a big deal, eliminating one wrong answer, but it's making these types of decisions and doing this type of thinking that over the length of this long test can lead to several more correct answers and increase your chances of passing. We have the proportion 189 is to 4.5 written as a fraction 189 over 4.5 as miles is to 8 hours shown as m over 8. To solve for m we cross multiply the 8 and that gives us 189 times 8 divided by 4.5. We press enter. We get 336 miles. This is where we see 336 miles. And we circle our correct answer, B. Problem 10. The heights of some trees and feet are 118, 86, 121, 95, and 110. If a tree with a height of 106 feet is added to the list, which measure of central tendency will change? In order to do this problem, we must know what these four words mean. Mean is the average, median is the one in the middle, mode is the most common number, and range is the highest number minus the lowest number. Let's look at the easiest ones first. For the range, we have the highest number, which is 121, minus the lowest number, which is 86. And without even calculating it, we know that 106, being between those two numbers, will not change the measure of the range, so we cross off answer D. Now to look at the mode, which one of these numbers is the most frequently occurring? Since none of the numbers happen more than once, including 106 after adding it, the mode will not change either, so we cross off answer C as well. For median, we'll line up all the numbers in order from lowest to highest. If we cross off the numbers on the ends one at a time, we're left with our median value in the middle, 110. And with the new tree of 106 added to the list of trees, we have this list of six numbers. And crossing off the numbers on the ends, we don't have a single number left over, but two of them in the middle, 106 and 110. So to find the median, we take the average of these two numbers, which is 108. And six 106 does not equal 108, we know that B is the correct answer, so we circle answer B. To be, to be sure, though, we'll go ahead 
and calculate the mean, and that would be answer A, by adding the five original numbers together to get 530. Then we divide by the number of trees, 5, and get 106. And since the mean is 106, another tree of that height of 106 feet will not change the mean, so we cross off that answer A as well. This has been Tax Objective 9 Problems. Thanks for viewing.